Uh, people were saying that you've been talking about this Rube Waddell thing for so long. Uh, this was sent to us by Granny. Do we want to do the Rube Waddell thing finally? I don't care. This I don't a, know what happened. This is a video called Rube Waddell, Baseball's Most Interesting Man. Now, if this doesn't go well, we can blame Granny. Uh, thank you guys very much for the support tonight. Very awesome. As always, this is the best audience out there, and it's growing every day, and it's great when we hit those goals, so thank you. Hall of Fame pitcher Rube Waddell was arguably better than Cy Young, but he also used to leave the mound during games to chase fire trucks. <laughs> okay, what? off to a great start if you ask me. A blaring start. Or go fishing, or go pet puppies that fans had in the stands. Aww. Does that sound insane to you? Well, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Uh -oh. Here's a crash course on your new favorite baseball player of all time. Rube Waddell was born George Waddell in October Aww. of 1876. Dabber now, before fella. we go any further, I want to mention that his nickname, Rube, in our present era would never be acceptable. But that is what he'd come to go by. It will become clear to you that George Waddell suffered from some mental disability that was never diagnosed. Though that adds an <laughs> element of tragedy to- Yeah, in 1876, you were just fucked up. Yeah, you didn't have mental illness back then. You were, I think in 1876, the term they would use is you were touched. You were touched. That sounds or, about or right. A or they bit just off. called you Lenny. Yeah. At all times. Actually, medically, what they used to call mentally retarded people was uh, mongoloid idiot. Not all there. No, they, no. Mo on their birth certificate, like under the defects, it would be mongoloid idiot. I feel like I don't believe you. That one thousand percent true. In fact, is that on yours? When we, yes, <laughs> Waterhead was on that. I don't know oh, why. Waterhead. Um, no, it went. We'll look it up after this Rube Waddell thing. It will shock you up until what year they used Mongoloid Idiot or Mongoloid. That's kind of crazy. On that thing. But let's go back to Rube Waddell. To this tale, the shortcomings of his era also enabled him to become a Major League Baseball Hall of Famer and a genuine hero. That's true, and I'm sorry to pause this so much. I'll let it run, but it is amazing. Like, if you ever think about that, how sometimes we, we maybe over-diagnose these kids... And then we put them in special needs and all this stuff, and we're missing out on a few Rube Waddells or Forrest Gump, where if yeah. we just would have pretended they didn't have anything, they'd maybe achieve more. And that you're kind of limiting these kids to begin with by going, no, nope, just put them in a special class where they don't learn as much and, you know, all of that. And no, overdiagnosing is for sure a thing, and then over-medicating and yeah. over-coddling because something's wrong with the kid, of course, and then they don't go explore. And... Could have a Rube Waddell on your hands. Yeah. Waddell grew up on a farm in northeastern Pennsylvania and never had any sort of formal education. There are uh -oh. two different stories about how he strengthened his throwing arm and learned to pitch. One is that his favorite childhood hobby was throwing rocks at birds, and two, he used to throw rocks at cows who were trying to eat seeds off the farmland before they were fully planted. <laughs> So you'd have this little retarded kid so he's just chucking rocks at things and he becomes like super strong and becomes a major league pitcher. So he's into uh, animal abuse. And is that where the certain type of strength came from? Yeah. Do you think that maybe like if he were, I'd like to just like have him do a game in 1900, but like the interviewer is like a 2022 ESPN person like Rube, how'd you get so strong? He's like, Oh, well, when I lived on the farm, I used to throw <laughs> rocks at chickens, and I used to chuck rocks at the heads of cows that were eating our seed grain. All right, back to you in the studio. That's Rube Waddell, who threw his third no-hitter of the season today. Uh, new meaning to our word strength. It's Rube strength. Rube strength. Now, all of a sudden, you've just got, like, you know how kids like to copy their favorite athletes? All of a sudden, you're just going to see a, a, a an outgrowth <laughs> of children chucking rocks at domesticated animals trying to become major league picture, pitchers. Of... Like their buddy Rube Waddell. Animal abuse goes up through the roof. <laughs> Either way... Rube Waddell learned to pitch by throwing rocks at animals, and he was soon dominating the mound in his local youth baseball leagues. Oh when he was 19, his natural pitching ability and raw power earned him a spot on a local semi-pro team. He was extremely talented, but he also didn't really know the rules of baseball. <laughs> he just throws things. It's kind of like when they teach like a seven foot seven Ugandan how to play basketball, and he's just kind of like, like he gets it, and he just goes, uh, I got the rebound here. <laughs> Why are they Ugandan? Because they're always freakishly tall for some reason. If a ball was hit back to him, he routinely fired the ball at the hitter running down the first base. <laughs> <laughs> Rube Waddell would treat the runner like he was a chicken on the farm and just chuck the fucking ball at his head. Hey, but did it work? 
Yeah. Did they get the guy? Line, right. Instead of throwing it to his first baseman. When his manager asked him about it, he said, hit the batter and he's out where I come from. After <laughs> The cows tip over, so does he. Dude, I'm immediately making him my new favorite athlete. I want a Rube Waddell jersey. This is pretty great. He got over that hurdle and learned to throw the ball to first base. Waddell was offered a job with the Franklin Braves. Once he arrived in Franklin, his lack of education was, let's say, apparent. Instantly earning him the nickname Rube. What is with, I know that Nazis weren't around back then. What's with the fucking Nazi salute at second base? I don't know. I mean, obviously, that this is, is like 1900, so it's not... That is uncanny, though. It's odd. God, the Nazis copied everything from us. Eugenics. I mean, look at this shit. It's the oh. same thing. A apparent, instantly earning him the nickname Rube, courtesy of his catcher, Jack Nelson. The name would stick for the rest of his days. It was also in Franklin that Rube's legendary antics would begin. Though he was almost an unspeakably good pitcher, Rube would often be halfway through pitching a game and then just wander off the mound and not return. <laughs> just fuck off and leave. For a second, though, that'd be a great life. You've got this killer job that you don't even understand how good it is. You're better than everybody you at it. You can just leave. And because you're better than everybody, there's no consequences. Right. The, the, he'd never blow all his money because he probably doesn't like expensive things. He'd buy, like, Skittles. No, he likes rocks. Yeah, he'd, 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 rocks are free. Babe, did you just say he'd buy Skittles? Yeah, he'd buy a bunch of Skittles. How old are Skittles? Probably about 100 years old. Look that shit up. Do I you bet think you Skittles. he had Skittles in his tummy? M&M's. I bet you they were around in 1900. I bet a Hershey bar. Okay, fine. Fuck me. He ate Hershey bars then. Skittles. I'll make your head crunch. How's that for a candy? Make your head crunch. Sometimes he went fishing. Sometimes he just walked off the mound and headed to a bar. Sometimes <laughs> he would get distracted by dogs in the stands and leave the mound to play with them. So cute. I want him. I want a Rube Waddell jersey. I wrote it down, damn it. Most alarmingly, if a fire truck ever drove by the stadium, Rube would dart off the mound and chase after it. He'd run off the mound, run out of the stadium, <laughs> and chase fire trucks. He's literally a dog that saw a squirrel. He's the nicest fucking ape man who's ever played the game. He's so dumb. Tell me he got married. He didn't even, he tragically didn't know how good he was at baseball. I'm going to say that one more time because it's important that it sinks in. Rube Waddell was a grown man and a professional baseball player. During professional baseball games, if a fire truck drove by the stadium, <laughs> he would leave the field and chase after the truck. At one point, the team just had to tell the fire department, if somebody's house on the way to the stadium burns, uh, starts on fire, you have to let it burn down. Rube's got to win today. He, yes. We're banning dogs from the stadium. Uh, All the bars are closed. Closing the bars, and the fire department shuts down during our baseball games. Uh, no more fishing licenses. Yeah, allowed. no more fishing. <laughs> the Franklin Braves ended up folding, but that wasn't the end of the line for Rube Waddell as word of his talent continued to spread. A local college made Waddell an offer for him to come pitch for them. The offer was free tuition, which to no fault of his own, he couldn't really do anything with. But they also <laughs> offered him free room and board, one dollar per game, and free tobacco. And those three things all sounded wow. great to Rube. At Volant College, on the mound, Rube was nothing short of dominant. The games were seven innings, two innings shorter than the ones you're used to, and Rube averaged, he averaged, 15 strikeouts per game. That Jesus. means out of 21 outs, sometimes 18 if you didn't play the bottom half of the inning, he'd strike out on av on a just a boring day, he'd strike out 15 guys. That's incredible. <laughs> Which, if you're not a fan of baseball, those are best-in-the-world type numbers. And that's not all. There are reports that more than once, Rube turned to his teammates playing the field and told them to leave the field while he pitched to the next batter. <laughs> <laughs> Rube's a mouthy little tart. He's just like... Fuck this guy. Go sit down. I like that, though. Wouldn't you like that? Rube Baker's a... Or Rube, Rube Baker. Baker. That's, that's from uh, Major League Two. Oh, Rube you. Waddell's a dick. Because he didn't need any defense. Because the ball wasn't going to get hit. And then he'd strike them out. It's also widely reported that after he'd end innings with strikeouts, he'd do cartwheels or somersault his way back to the dugout. <laughs> it didn't take too long for his dominant numbers, as well as tales of his antics, to catch the eye of Major League scouts. And Fuck Rube yeah. was signed to the Louisville the Cardinals in 1897, a professional ball club. <laughs> oh, that's definitely Rube. <laughs> right? 
Oh, that is Rube Waddell. You can spot him from a mile Everyone away. Everyone else is looking at the camera for the most part, and then there's... Rube's looking at a puppy. He's so fluffy. Rube only lasted two days in Louisville after he was fined $50 for going on a drinking bender. Rube <laughs> didn't like the fine, and he didn't understand why he wasn't allowed to get plowed whenever he felt like it. So he quit the team. <laughs> Largely because of his drinking problem, which was severe and not to be understated, Rube spent the better part of the next five years ping-ponging back and forth between the majors and the minors all while chasing fire trucks and wrestling alligators in the off season. <laughs> because of course he did. What else wrestling are you gonna do? Wrestling alligators. Is that weird? It's hard to know where the line is between weird and not weird when it comes to Rube Waddell. In 1902, legendary manager Connie Mack decided to take a chance on Rube, bringing him back to the majors and signing him to the Philadelphia Athletics. With the Philadelphia A's, Rube was absolutely spectacular. He pitched in 33 games that season, amassing a 24-7 record with a 2.05 ERA. Holy and led the American wow. League with 210 strikeouts, 50 more than Cy Young had that year. Oh and my. Cy Young pitched in 100 more innings that season than Rube. He had 50 more strikeouts than the greatest pitcher of all time. The guy mm -hmm. that... Hey, April, you know what they call the award that they give the best pitcher in baseball? The Cy... It's the Cy Young Award. I Okay, I was going to say Young, I wasn't confident. He struck out 50 more people than that guy yeah. and pitched 100 less innings, which is like, I don't know, uh, 11 or 12 less games. So why don't more people talk about this We're going to find out. Rube also pitched baseball's very first immaculate inning, throwing nine pitches and retiring three batters. Wow. From 1903 to 1907, he put up similarly staggering numbers leading the league in strikeouts six years in a row. And he did it all wow. while being the same old Rube we've come to know and love. <laughs> he missed starts because he was fishing. He was late <laughs> to games fine. because he was playing marbles or stickball in the streets of Philadelphia I with like children. Marbles. And of course, he usually wore a red shirt under his uniform just in case a fire truck drove by <laughs> so that he could chase after it and join the firemen and help out. The red shirt, I suppose, made him feel like he himself was a part of the fire engine crew. According to baseball historian Lee Allen, Waddell began the 1903 season sleeping in a firehouse in Camden, New Jersey, and ended it tending bar in a saloon in Wheeling, West Virginia. <laughs> in between those events, he won 22 games for the Philadelphia Athletics, toured the nation in a melodrama called The Stain of Guilt, courted, married, and became separated mm. from Mae Wynne Skinner of Lynn, Massachusetts, what? saved a woman from drowning, accidentally shot a friend through the hand, and was bitten by a lion. <laughs> That's right. Rube's undeniable talent and the uh, legend of his aww. antics made him so famous that he even tried his hand at acting in a touring play. <laughs> Which one's him? The audience loved his performance, but it was likely a nightmare for the other actors because Rube improvised every single one of his lines. <laughs> to he couldn't remember his script, so he just went off. Look at the varying sizes of these people. I know. That's a, when you were allowed. That's when, actually scary. That's when freaks were allowed to have jobs. We didn't overprotect them, and they got to make money Jeez. doing this shit. Is that him on the left? I think that might be him. Uh, I think that's Rube. I don't know. Since he couldn't remember even one word of the script. And yes, apparently he was bitten by a lion. Somehow. There are no articles or first-hand accounts that tell exactly how that happened, just that it did. But since this is Rube Waddell we're talking about, literally anything is possible. It's also worth noting that during this time, Rube's contract with the ball club included a quote, no eating crackers in the bed clause. <laughs> it used to be common for players to share beds on the road, and Rube's bedmate, Ozzy Schreckenghost, could never get any sleep because Rube was always eating crackers and getting crumbs all over the bed. Aww. The American League strikeout leader. As quickly as Rube Waddell rose to start him a national acclaim, he fell. In oh, the end, no. his antics, on the field and off, and his severe alcohol abuse led to his demise, Aww. as it normally yeah. does. By the end of 1907, his performance on the mound severely waned and only went downhill for the next three years. He pitched his final major league pitch in 1911. In 1912, Rube was living in Kentucky when a nearby dam collapsed. Given his background of chasing fire trucks, it should come as no surprise that Waddell immediately jumped into action trying to help however he could. He saved several people from drowning. He pulled people from damaged homes to safety. Oh, he worked tirelessly in the died. frigid waters to stack sandbags. He was a true hero, and if nothing else, he should be remembered for that. His heroism, however, came at a price. Rube developed a severe case of pneumonia from which he never fully recovered. He died in hospice in 1914, tragically. 
perfectly. I don't like this picture. <laughs> elegantly, creepy. wildly enough, on April Fool's Day. In 1946, Rube Waddell was enshrined in the baseball hall. Yes! Of Perhaps there is no one more deserving. Thanks for watching this. There we go. That's from uh, Weird History. So that was subscribe a well to made them. video. Fucking great video. Now we Weird just need history, to. Weird History, huh? Dude, that guy was awesome. I love people are calling him the R-worded Superman. <laughs> They're saying, have you seen my baseball? Holy shit. Rube Dude, Waddell is awesome. Disappointing to me that of all the things he was into, like even drinking shit, pneumonia took him out. Yeah, I, I, I thought like for that. sure it was going to be. I thought it was going to be um, the like, drinking that did it. The in. drinking or getting hurt in one of his rescue missions. Oh, I don't. There's no Rube Waddell jerseys anywhere. I might have to get one made. A Philadelphia A's Rube Waddell jersey. Can you get a Rube Waddell gifts and merchandise? Redbubble.com. The Rube. The Rube. That's him with an alligator. There's Rube Waddell with an alligator. That's ba pretty cool. Baseball's greatest pitchers, Rube Waddell. There's him holding the alligator and being bitten by a lion. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so not much. No. These are funny. Not enough people know about Rube Waddell because I would really That's like a Rube Waddell jersey. Kind of tragic, isn't it? Yeah, it's too bad. That's an awesome story. Thank you very much. That was uh, Granny, Thanks, Granny who sent us that. Great job, buddy. Uh, Royal Corvid says, sub from Review Tech USA. Drunken peasants may be near death, but this is a pretty good podcast. Great host. Oh, thanks, buddy. Thank uh, drunken peasants, that's uh, the Kirk guy. Uh, amazing atheist. Does he still do? They still do that show? Mm. Why are they near death? What's the deal there? It was pretty popular a few years ago. I, I never really followed their show. I knew who he was. But I don't really know much. Oh, my God. Aren't they the guys who uh, their podcast and Joe Rogan's podcast? Isn't that what fucked that uh, Milo over? Because he said fucked up shit about uh, gay people. Maybe. Having sex with kids. Oh. And Maybe. that kind of got him derailed from his fame train. I don't I think know much about them, but you might be on to something. I think that might be it. Uh, they're saying he had a slight tinge of Doc Holliday in him. No, I think he had a slight tinge of Forrest Gump in him. A lot. Yeah, a lot of Forrest Gump. Do you think he learned, like, you know how he learned how to pitch and stuff on the farm? Do you think he learned how to chase fire trucks because, like, dogs would do it and shit like that? Does he just follow things he sees because he had no schooling? Yeah, I, I don't know. It's very weird. I mean, there was clearly, like, if he lived now, he never, they would have never allowed him out to become house. a pitcher. Yeah, out of the house. That's what I'm saying. Like, nowadays, I wonder if we're not limiting some people because we take pity on them. Well, wonder no further. We are, of course. But then again, I mean, but then should again, Rube Waddell really have been let loose on the world? No. And someone married him. She did leave him, but someone married and back him. Back then, baseball players didn't make very good money. So. No, he got free tobacco for his troubles. <laughs> yeah, free tobacco for, uh, for throwing pitches. Yeah. Uh, I can use profanities. What's up, I sneeze? I feel so unaccomplished right now after that story. Yeah, because Rube Waddell right. has outdone you? He's outdone you. All right, well, don't make it personal. I'm not, <laughs> yeah, I'm not the one sitting here saying <laughs> that I feel bad. I don't feel bad. I acknowledge Rube Waddell's supremacy over me. The guy chases fire trucks and ice cream trucks and, like... Wrestles alligators. A, a world, yeah, wrestles alligators. He's a Hall of Famer. I what think I, I think the I think the part that the teams objected to though, like, was in the middle of a game that was going to count towards their season standings, where he's striking out fifteen people. Uh, he's abandoning his post on the mound to chase a fire truck. Yeah, but that that fills heat, right? Or or to pet a puppy, like <laughs> he went to, or to go drink or fish. <laughs> he would just leave. Right Fishing's in the middle. Acceptable. Do you know how fucking good you have to be at your job that you just leave to play with a puppy and they're like, yeah, he'll be back sometime. Well, what if he got you in such a good position? Yeah. It didn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> the guy's a fucking legend. Like, I, I, I now have a new hero. Rube Waddell. I wish but, there were jerseys of him. He deserves better. We're going to get uh, one. But it's not like I, I guess he doesn't have any family. I mean, the, the bloodline kind of ended with old Rube. You know, I do work with a merch company. Well, yeah, we you can just get you said a the other day, retards can't produce. 
<laughs> Wait. <laughs> Thank you, I sneeze. Wonderful to hear from you, sir. <laughs> hey, mate. Uh, you did say that. Yeah. It was me, though. <laughs> disavow, disavow, disavow. Yeah. Uh, Granny says, after doing more research, he punched the lion in the face. <laughs> That's why he was bitten. Okay, well, then there you go. There's a reason why Rube got bitten by the Interesting. lion. Uh, Wide at says this guy missed that Rube saved a bunch of lives. That yeah, that's true too. Rube rescued a bunch of people in that dam collapse and then got, and the got pneumonia. pneumonia. He died on a I, Tuesday. I don't like that like heroes like that that were so interesting go out with the saddest like reasons. Like yeah. the pneumonia. I think that's my favorite that that's now my favorite sports story. Sure. It now beats out Buzkashi. For me, because well, that's not a specific story. Really, I think Buskashi is my favorite sports story I've ever seen. Before that, I mean, it's pretty good, but it's not about a certain person. People are pointing out that like every bad thing that Rube like did or thing that looks a little iffy, he did to save people. So Dave's saying he probably punched the lion to save someone. That is true. What if there was a baby? Yeah. Well, he's no Roberto Duran. Roberto Duran would have knocked out the lion. After all, Roberto Duran knocked out a horse. It's a bad motherfucker, that Roberto Really? Duran. Oh, yeah. Uh, Royal Corvid says, I didn't still catching up on RTUS streams. It died after the, uh, the Drunken Peasants podcast died after the Kirk brothers left. No one knows for sure, but they moved and quit the show. Also, yes, about Milo, we were there. Okay, so that, that is the show mm. that Milo was on that kind of started the, the descent if you will. Uh, well, we still got about five minutes left in the show. I do want to thank you guys because you're starting us 60 bucks ahead for tomorrow's goal. And tomorrow night, I want you guys to make sure you're here tomorrow night because tomorrow night is the prize show. If you've never watched a Steel Toe prize show, it's utter chaos mm -hmm. from start to finish. Everybody who's a member is in a $100 drawing. Everyone who's in a, who is a VIP is in a $100 drawing. And we have a $15 PayPal or a $20 Super Chat offer where we give you two of these five and a half inch vinyl stickers. And with those stickers comes a free entry into a $250 drawing that night. So for the 15 bucks on PayPal that night, not now, uh, you get two of these sent to you for free. And these are eight bucks on the, uh, the website. <laughs> you got it. So you get $16 <laughs> worth of prizes for your 15 bucks. But also you get entered in a $250 drawing that night for free. So that's a pretty good deal. And if you win Benefits. the drawing, you can either have us send you 250 bucks or you can become a Steel Toe VIP. It's totally up to you. Now, what I would personally do, I would take the VIP thing because then every other prize show, I don't have to keep re-entering. Right. I'm automatically You're in, in a $100 drawing, but who knows? Who knows? Uh, with a couple, of, so thank you guys very much for all your support tonight, and yes. thank you guys for teaming up to get uh, K Fallen a VIP. That's cool. That's very cool. And uh, remember to go on Eventbrite, search Steel Toe Morning Show, and get tickets to our anniversary show at Stoney's for next Saturday. Uh, we'd like to sell that thing out. Uh, we'd like to fill up the cornhole tournament. You guys can also sign up for that at the event because it looks like we'll have some spots open. But make sure you you reserve as early as possible. Uh, y'all know Rube would donate at least two pay paychecks if he was alive and here today as a fan. Rube's one of those guys I'd have to stop from donating. Yep. Super fan. How much money did a baseball player make in 1903? Uh, salary in 1903. Oh, oh in 1904, the highest pay, uh, annual salaries was $5,000. No, so we're going back so far. There's no data for some yeah. years. MLB annual salary leaders since 1874. Uh, so if we go down here, let's go right around when Rube Waddell was playing. Uh, so about eight, uh, between five and 85. So let's call it $7,000. Now we got to go to an inflation calculator and find out what that is today. Ty and Cobb had a solid nine grand in 1910. Ty Cobb made a shitload of money. He he was mad at baseball players because they were so stupid. Because he was like, baseball players can make big money. That's Dude, in that movie Cobb. I think he was just mad. Uh, that 1903, $7,000. Oh, they can't go back that far? Oh, 1913. Ooh. Really? All right, let's that go. Would, 
10 years is going to make a big difference. Holy shit. Seven grand in 1913 would be $209,000 today. So it was probably even more a decade before that. I'm sure. You know what? If we go to a better inflation calculator, we'll be able to find that. We'll figure that out. Oh, this one only oh. goes to 2013 Maybe as well. Maybe there wasn't enough documented back then. Well, you had so the Federal sense. Reserve in 1913. So maybe, yep, this oh only goes to 1914. So you can't, here, I'll, I'll use my phone. My phone has one where you can type in any year you want. Uh, I have a better inflation calculator than everyone else. Uh, inflation calculator, 7,000 in 1903. $220,000. So that was about right. That's pretty cool. So Rube probably lot. made the equivalent of about a hundred, anywhere from 100 to 200 grand. Yeah. For his trouble. That's not bad for a giant ape man. Walking off and drinking all the time. Yeah. How much did Ty Cobb make if he was making nine grand? Nine grand in 1910. Ty Cobb made about 300 grand a year. So. That's awesome. He was, he was fucking everybody up money wise. Uh, 9,000. How high did he get? Because I'm sure he was. Oh, he made up to. He made 15,000 in 1914. Ty Cobb. 20 was the, in yeah, 1916. Ty Cobb was the guy who got everybody paid, and he was making 20 grand <laughs> every year. Yeah. He's the highest every single year there for until a long time. Babe, until Babe Ruth came along and then doubled what everybody was making because everybody wanted to go watch Babe Ruth. Look at that. When Babe Ruth left the game, wow. the salary went down to 30,000 from 50,000. So what was That's, Ty Cobb making at the end? 20 grand? This is very interesting. So Ty Cobb was making 20 grand in 1915. So when they list Babe Ruth and Tris Speaker under that too, that must mean they were making all the same at that year? Because they're listed oh, yeah, in yeah, the yeah, same that, spot? They, yeah, they're even. They're equal. Uh, 20,000 in 1916. Those guys were making half a million a year. I mean, not anywhere close to what it is now, but I mean, good money. You'll be taken care yeah, of. Yeah, they'll be okay. So Ty Cobb was making, Ty Cobb looks like he made about five to $10 million during his career. Ty was, plus Ty Cobb like invested in Coca-Cola and he was in on oil companies and steel companies. Like Ty Cobb died a very wealthy man. 